Okay, we, it is almost 2 o'clock, so I've turned on the recording and I'm testing the uh, sound right now. So, everyone hear me all right? Okay, so like I tried to say before, I don't know if anyone was able to hear, but we now have the new ROI on the Austin Echo website. So, if you haven't had a chance to go off and print off a copy yet, please head on over there real quick and um, either pull up an electronic copy or print one off. It'll be a lot easier if you have one to refer to while we're talking. And we're still missing about a dozen folks, so we're going to hold off just a few more minutes. Uh, just to let you guys know that as we're going through this webinar, um, you'll have the option of submitting questions through the chat box in the bottom right-hand corner. So definitely feel free to submit questions there. Uh, we will not be answering questions during the webinar itself, but at the very end, we will pull all those questions into one document and answer those all at once. So definitely feel free to add those up as they come to mind, but hopefully we'll answer most of your questions as we're going through the webinar itself.
Okay. Can you hear me all right? Okay, everyone. It's officially 2.05, so let's go ahead and get started. Anyone who's a little bit late can just see the beginning on the uh, recorded webinar later on. So, welcome to our ROI webinar, and I hope you're all as excited to hear about it as I am to present it. So, we've been working on this new piece of paperwork for quite a while, so I hope you'll be as happy as we are with the end result. So, again, if you don't have a copy of the new ROI yet, you can go to the Austin Echo website and download, uh, download or print one off right there. And uh, then you'll be able to refer to that as we're actually going through the webinar. Uh, like I said earlier as well, if you do have any questions as we're going along, feel free to answer or to ask those through the question box in the right-hand corner of your screen. Uh, but we won't actually be getting th to those until after the webinar. So hopefully, though, like I said, we'll be able to answer most of your questions as we're going along. Okay. So first of all, why do we need this new ROI? So this new ROI fulfills the October 2013 Membership Council Steering Committee recommendations um, to help us support the work of coordinated assessment by doing three things. It changes HMIS to an open system. So now instead of clients having to manually opt into sharing, clients can instead opt out if they choose to do so. Um, it limits the opt out of sharing to additionally protected data around detailed medical information, specific disabilities, domestic violence experiences, case management notes, and individually refused questions. So there are still some categories that clients can uh, uh, lock off or share as a group. But other than that, instead, clients will instead have the option of refusing to answer specific questions or share specific questions instead of whole groups of data. And uh, last of all, it also gives clients the option to allow the sharing of services, which would identify the service provider agency that may serve a protected class around mental health, substance abuse, and HIV or AIDS. So the vast majority of clients and providers right now, um, uh, they do not now open the sharing of services. But with this new ROI, ROI uh, clients will now have the option of requesting that those services be shared if they think it can improve the uh, services that are provided by the community. So kind of some of the history of how we came to this new ROI. Um, ECHO enlisted the help of legal and privacy experts in D.C., Texas, and ATCIC's attorney, attorney privacy officer, and uh, forms review committee in drafting this new ROI. Uh, the document is deliberately client-friendly, so it makes it easier for clients to understand and easier for staff to explain the benefits of client share, clients sharing their information. So our hope is that with this new and improved ROI, we will have an open system that provides dignity to our clients by no longer requiring them to repeatedly tell their story at every individual agency. So with this open system, the client will provide the information once, and then our HMIS participating agencies will be able to use that data from that one intake to efficiently provide and coordinate services that assist clients in moving out of homelessness and into permanent housing. So additionally, this will also lead to improved community level data, the ability to track clients as they move through the system from agency to agency and housing intervention to housing intervention, uh, better system-wide analysis, improved service delivery, and improved communication amongst uh, HMIS agency partners, which is an essential element of a successful coordinated assessment system. Uh, this ROI will also allow agencies to not only share information within HMIS with one another, but it will also allow agency staff to communicate directly with one another uh, about clients and about cases outside of the system in order to uh, coordinate services. So one of those common complaints we got about the last ROI was that it didn't specifically address uh, staff members discussing a client's case outside of HMIS. So instead, clients were having to fill out separate agency ROIs for every individual agency that wanted to discuss their case. So one of our most important goals in uh, crafting this ROI was to make sure that we could take that piece off of the client, if at all possible. So we've also included the option to share with outside agencies in those cases, so that if a client is uh, co-enrolled in both an HMIS agency and an outside non-HMIS agency, they can still use the same ROI to allow sharing between all of our agencies and that outside agency as well. So easier for the clients and easier for all of us. So the timeline for implementation. The system will officially become open on November 1st of this year. So on that day, staff will need to begin collecting a new ROI on all clients who are coming in new to the system and all clients who already exist in the system who uh, will be putting in new data or receiving new services on November 1st or afterwards. So anyone for whom you collect any new HMIS data. We also recommend that staff go ahead and update the ROI for all existing clients, regardless of whether uh, they have an HMIS update because then that ROI will be in the system and ready to go whenever it is time to do an update for a client. Uh, that will also give us the permission to talk to one another outside of the system uh, if that client desires it uh, before they actually get an, a, uh, any data upgrades within the system. So it gives them the chance to make that uh, decision even earlier. So 
one big switch for this new system is that we are now requiring that all of these new original ROIs that are gathered on or after November 1st be physically scanned and uploaded into the HMIS system and actually attached to the appropriate client's profile. So like with all other HMIS data entry, ROIs are going to be treated uh, like any other uh, data element, and uh, the expectation will be that it's uploaded into the system within five business days. So training, ECHO has scheduled this webinar for today at 2 o'clock. Um, if that's news to any of you guys, I'm impressed you made it here. But we are also saving it, uh, so it will be available on our website for anyone who wants to review it and watch it again, or for anyone who, for whatever reason, wasn't able to make it here to watch it in uh, real time. Um, that will, again, be posted right on our website. And uh, every ethics and uh, new user training from today onwards will include training on the new ROI. So very conveniently, our next training and uh, ethics training are uh, tomorrow and the day afterwards. So folks will get that opportunity before um, we switch to the new system on the 1st. So there are also some additional privacy-related documents, such as the privacy statement, the privacy notice, and the posted sign that should be posted anywhere that a client is filling out the ROI. And we are also updating those as well to match the language of the new ROI. So those will, again, be made available on the ECHO website and sent out directly to participating agencies uh, before the system becomes open on the 1st. About the document itself, hopefully everyone's had the chance to either uh, print it off or pull it up online, but just to talk about it real quick, the document itself is three pages long, so exactly the same length as our current ROI. Um, again, the final ROI has already been posted to our website, um, but it will also be sent out to all agency admins separately, just so folks have it as convenient as possible. Um, we are currently translating the document into Spanish, so that should be available before November 1st. Uh, this document is at about a 10th grade lead reading level, so it's the uh, actually a very uh, slightly uh, a slight improvement over our current ROI, which is 10.5. This one is 10.3, so gradual improvement. And uh, just a reminder that even though this client or this uh, ROI was designed with client-friendly language in mind. Uh, an ROI should still be uh, explained to a client by a staff member and not just handed to them and expect them to read it over. So even though we feel most clients would be able to read this form and understand it intuitively, we want a staff member to be actively explaining what all these different policies, procedures, and uh, implications are. Okay. So what does it actually look like? Here we go. I assure you this slide was a lot more dramatic before we posted this on the website, but this is what our new ROI looks like. So we'll be going through actual each individual section describing what it means for the clients and what it means for our providers. Okay, so agency completing form. This agency collects information about people who ask about our homeless services. When we meet with you, we will ask you for information about you and your family. We will put the information you give us into a com computer program called Bowman System Service Point, or HMIS. Austin Travis County HMIS data is all stored in one computer system. Your information will be shared with all agencies that use our system, all HMIS agencies, to help you get services more quickly and easily. A list of all current HMIS agencies is on the next page of this form, and you can ask for a new copy at any time. Okay, so exactly like it all says, this is at the beginning. It describes a little bit about the system to, uh, with the assumption that a client doesn't know what HMIS is yet, but can be explained relatively quickly. And this first line here is going to be a switch from the way we are currently gathering ROIs. So currently, when a client goes to a new HMIS agency, they're expected to fill out a new ROI regardless of how many times they've completed that ROI before and how many times they've given permission before. Instead, clients will only have to make that decision once. So at the beginning of the form, if you are the first agency to gather that form with a client, this is where you'll be able to indicate that uh, you're the agency that completed it. So if it, uh, once it gets uploaded into the system, though, even if an ROI has already been filled out by a client or uh, by a client with another agency, you will not need to complete it again. We only have to complete it once because this releases for the entire system and every agency that participates in the system. So if we don't have to make a client do something twice, let's not. The personal information we share may include personal identifying information, such as name, social security number, and date of birth, who is in your household, job history, military history, living situation and housing history, educational background, demographic information, such as race, gender, and ethnicity, 
your income and income sources, services you request and receive, if you are homeless or not, reasons for seeking services, and self-reported health needs. Again, just like it says, we're just telling clients what different types of personal information we might gather in an attempt to give them the best services possible. You can refuse to answer any question at any time, including questions about the things listed above. You will never be denied help because you didn't answer a question unless we need that answer to know if you are eligible for a service. We will not store or share treatment records about mental health, HIV or AIDS, or drug, alcohol, or substance abuse treatment unless you give us specific permission. We may also share some of your information from HMIS with agencies that do not use their HMIS system, outside agencies, for different summary reports about homelessness. Personal information that could be used to tell who you are will only be put in those reports if we have your written permission or if the law lets us or requires us, sorry, just type on this one, to, uh, to share that information without permission. So very importantly, we want a client to know what's going to happen with the information they give us, and we want them to know that they are not required to answer all the questions that we're asking. So a client has the right to refuse to answer any question, and they should not and cannot be denied services because there was some particular question they didn't want to answer unless you specifically need that information to determine if they're eligible. So if a client just does not want to answer their race for whatever reason, we can mark that refused. We can't deny them services because of that. So much like with current ROI, this will actually be at the bottom of that first page where it says, please initially here to show that you have read and understand the rules above. This is a client acknowledging that they understand how the HMIS system works and they understand what's going to happen to any, the answers to any questions that they give us. And very importantly, like we said at the end, that there's no specific question they specifically have to answer. They have the right to refuse. On to the second page. So consent for release of personal information. In addition to the information sharing above, you can also choose to let HMIS agencies share and discuss your personal information outside of the computer system to help give you services. To let HMIS agencies share your personal identifying information with outside agencies for research, reporting, and coordinating services. And to let HMIS agencies put any treatment records about mental health, HIV or AIDS, or drug, alcohol, or substance abuse treatment into our computer system as part of your personal information. So like we mentioned earlier, this is where clients can give us express permission to share their information outside of the system, so to discuss, it, uh, discuss information in cases freely with one another in order to coordinate their services. Um, this is where they also have the option of giving us permission to share their personal information, specifically their personal identifying information, with outside agencies if we're doing things like data matching or um, impact studies to show um, the benefits uh, for the community for the different uh, programs that we operate. And last of all, um, for actual uh, treatment records about those protected health records there, um, we do need clients express permission if we're going to store or share any of those records within our system. So this is where clients have the option of agreeing or not agreeing um, to let us include those. Um, again, though, uh, like we said, additional sharing is entirely optional, but we also do have a duty to let clients know why we share. And that's because additional sharing makes it easier and more efficient to provide um, services to, uh, to our populations. So let's definitely make sure folks understand the, uh, the implications of every decision where they're being presented with as part of this ROI. Please think about the information below before making your decisions. Personal, identifying inf or personal information that can be used to tell who you are, personal identifying information, will only be shared with outside agencies with your permission or when the law lets us share that information without your permission. If you let us put any treatment records related to mental health, HIV or AIDS, or drug, alcohol, or substance abuse treatment into our computer system, we will share that information just like the rest of your personal information. The current list of HMIS agencies is at the end of this page. Any agency not on that list is considered an outside agency. Other agencies may join this list in the future and share your information just like the current HMIS agencies. You may ask for an updated list of HMIS agencies from any HMIS agency at any time. Some of your personal information may be protected by additional state and federal privacy laws. Agencies that must follow these laws may need additional permission to collect or share some of your information. So all those data points are pretty straightforward, but again, clients should know that even though we have a list of HMIS agencies on the next page, that different and new agencies may join our collaborative at some point. Uh, for example, we just had a new agency join. 
Um, mobile Representations is now one of the HMIS agencies. So if or when a new agency joins, clients will not be required to sign a new ROI because they're being informed right now that more agencies may join in the future. Once we share your information with an outside agency, that agency can, can sometimes share it with other outside agencies if the law says they can. Your permission to share your information will last for seven years from the date you sign this form. You can cancel this permission at any time by sending a written letter to the agency where you filled out this form. It may take up to three business days to process this cancellation letter. And this consent is voluntary. You will not be denied services if you refuse to sign this consent form. So again, like we said before, most of that is pretty straightforward. Um, significantly, this is a change from the previous ROI in that the previous ROI did last for seven years from the last time that data was updated. And instead, we've set this to seven years from the date that they've actually signed the form. So instead, it's a hard date based upon when they made the decision and not a rolling date based upon when we actually get an update. Um, make sure clients do know that they can cancel this permission if they give, uh, that they give us at this point and that the only thing they have to do to do so is to submit a written letter in writing to wherever filled out this form. Okay. And current Austin Travis County HMIS agencies, those are Aid Services of Austin, A New Entry, Any Baby Can, The Ark of the Capital Area, Austin Freenet, Austin Travis County Integral Care, Blackland CDC, Caritas of Austin, Casa Marianella, Catholic Charities of Central Texas, the City of Austin, Indian Community Homelessness Coalition, Family Elder Care, Foundation Communities, Foundation for the Homeless, Front Steps, Goodwill Industries of Central Texas, Green Doors, LifeWorks, Meals on Wheels and More, Mobile Loaves and Fishes, Safe Place, St. Louis House, Salvation Army, Texas Department of State Health Services, the Wright House Wellness Center, and UT School of Social Work Research Department. So again, this ROI covers the release of information or gives clients the option to grant a release of information for uh, us to freely discuss their case outside of the system. So. Any client who does agree to additional sharing on this next page, these are the, these are the uh, agencies they've given permission to discuss their case. Okay, and this next section here is actually the start of the very last page on the final form. So please initial below if you want to put treatment records about mental health, HIV, AIDS, or drug, alcohol, or substance abuse treatment into our, uh, into our computer system as part of your personal information. We will share this sensitive imp uh, health information for the record types you initial below. Uh, mental health treatment records, HIV AIDS test results of treatment, and drug, alcohol, or substance abuse treatment records. So again, all those, treatment, those types of health information have additional protections under Texas state law. So for us to include any kind of treatment records about any of those protected classes, clients have to give us express permission uh, both signing the, uh, uh, both agreeing to additional sharing on the next page and individually initially in each of these categories that they do want to uh, include in the system. Okay, please choose one. So either, yes, all Austin Travis County HMIS agencies may share and discuss personal information about me and my family outside of the computer system to help give us services. They may also share that information with outside agencies for research, reporting, and coordinating services. Or, no, I do not want HMIS agencies to share and discuss my personal information outside of the computer system. I also do not want information that can be used to tell who I am to be part of any outside reports or research. HMIS agencies may only share information in the computer system for questions I choose to answer. So this is where the client answers whether or not they would like to share out, uh, detailed information outside of the HMIS system. Please note that a client who answers yes could still refuse to answer any individual question while still allowing us to discuss the rest of their information. And any client who chooses no could still choose to answer any question within HMIS that they're willing for, uh, to let us uh, store and track as a community. We just would not be able to discuss that with any outside agencies or provide that to any outside agencies or to discuss any of that information outside of the system we wouldn't have the permission to do so. Next section is almost exactly the same as our current system, just client name, dependent names, client to representative signature, and witness signature. So this is where we record printed names, signatures, and staff signatures. Uh, naturally, adults still need to separately uh, uh, fill out their own individual ROIs, 
and dependents still need to be attached to an adult's ROI. So an adult who has the legal right and ability to agree to share their information or not. Okay. And in the very last section, so for clients who do choose to allow us to uh, share their information outside of a the system, they have the additional option here at the very end of the ROI to also add some additional agencies that are not currently HMIS agencies to also share and discuss their information. So if you chose yes above, you can also choose to let HMIS agencies share and discuss your personal information with outside agencies or individuals outside of the computer system to coordinate services. If you want to do that, please initial your choices below. And then we have some different options listed here. Austin Police Department, Austin Recovery, uh, Capital, uh, Capital of Texas Workforce, Community Care Health Centers, uh, Department of Assistive and Rehabilitative Services, Housing Authority of the City of Austin, Seton Breckenridge, Social Security Administration, St. David's Hospitals, Texas Rio Grande Legal Aid, Housing Authority of Travis County, Trinity Center, the VA. And then we've added some additional options here just if there's uh, any agency we've left out that the client is uh, currently a uh, concurrently enrolled client and would like you to be able to discuss their case with the case manager at that agency. So we have a few listed here. Um, in addition, we also have a space here for a contact person. So this could either be a, con a uh, backup contact person, if someone's willing to uh, let someone else get messages for them about different housing services or housing interventions, or it could be an emergency contact. Um, completely up to the client and the agencies uh, how that space is used. Okay. And then the very bottom of the form, so you can see we have the same footer on all three pages. This is our fine print section. This is just for staff or uh, agency use, uh, for things that uh, don't affect how the client's information is shared, but that we do need to keep a record of. So the three situations we have listed here, uh, the client received a telephonic explanation of this form, staff obtained telephonic acknowledgement of HMIS data sharing policy and documenting that consent with the staff signature on this form, client wishes to remain anonymous within HMIS, or an authorized representative completed this consent for the client, a description of the right to do so is attached. So if any of these situations apply, please make sure you initial every single page to show that you've, uh, you've done your due diligence in documenting um, either the situation itself or the client's wishes. Uh, very importantly, not every agency is currently able to accept a telephonic consent or a verbal consent. Um, ask your agency admin if you are one of those agencies and uh, they'll tell you the uh, extra steps we have to do um, to make sure that a telephonic consent is well documented and that the client gets the right and ability to actually fill out a, a, a physical paper form the first time they physically come in for, uh, for services. Um, in addition, um, just like with our current ROI, clients do still have the option and the right to remain anonymous within the system if they so choose, and uh, we'll cover the steps and uh, how to do that in uh, a, few, uh, a few slides from here. Okay. And then one more very important note. So like we said in, that R, in uh, one of those bullets on the second page, some of the agencies in the collaboratives, such as ASA, Wright House, ATCIC, and Safe Place, are held to additional more restrictive privacy laws over and above the HUD federal privacy standards. So some of those laws include HIPAA, VAWA, or uh, Texas Substance Abuse Record Regulations. So if that is one of your agencies, or if you are another agency that's held by a, a different, uh, uh, different law, uh, in these instances, your agency admin will inform you uh, whatever additional releases or written permissions you will need from the clients uh, in order to uh, gather and share their information uh, according to their wishes within the system. Um, additionally, these agencies are going to continue to have their clients' information sharing in HMIS default to closed or locked, just as they are under the old ROI, and case managers will continue to need to manually open visibility for all client information in HMIS once you have that appropriate permission and legal ability to share that within the system. So your agency admin will be your guide on these steps in addition to the additional paperwork. Um, so again, just one more time, you will continue to gather the new R HMIS ROI for your clients, and your agency admin will inform you what additional paperwork, if any, you need to gather and uh, the additional steps you need to take before you can open up any uh, information and service points um, exactly as you're doing now. So we, uh, we made this ROI with the intention of covering every agency that we possibly could. Uh, and covering the option for uh, open sharing whenever a client wished to do it from the very beginning. But for some of these, law, uh, from some of these additional restrictions or additional laws, um, agencies need some agency-specific forms in these cases. So we've deferred back to the experts at the agencies, the agency admins and privacy officers, and unfortunately that does mean that we still need to do take some extra steps for those agencies' clients to manually open up their, uh, their information.
Okay. So with all that information in mind, we've uh, taken together six, imp or six situations from the most likely to least likely that we've seen with, uh, based on what we've seen with clients from our current ROI. So most common situation, client says yes to sharing personal information, treatment records, sharing outside the agency, and they want to share with all additional agencies listed in the optional agencies section. And we'll go through the actual ROIs and how they'd be filled out in a second. Second possibility, client does not want any treatment records shown, but they want to share all their other data. So pretty straightforward. And actually, let's go ahead and just show them right now. So if client wants to share everything, it's the easiest thing they can possibly do. Just initial all their choices, fill in their name, any dependents about their name, they sign, you sign, they initial any different any additional agencies. A client wants to share all of that with all of those agencies, except they don't feel comfortable sharing their treatment records. It's going to look exactly the same, except they just didn't initial those uh, additional treatment records in that section. So without the permission to store or share those records, we won't. It's that straightforward. Third most common situation. The client does not want any information shared outside of the system or with any outside agencies. So this would be a situation where a client does want to give us their information and they want their services coordinated within HMIS, but they don't want anyone to discuss their information or share their information outside of the system or with any non-HMIS agency. So again, it looks very, very similar. They can choose which pieces that they initial or not. They, um, um, but when it comes time to choose the actual yes or no, they choose no. Um, and then they don't have the option of adding any optional agencies because since we can't discuss their information outside of the system, uh, we can't share them with any of those. We can't uh, share their information with any non-HMIS agency. Another possibility, a client is willing to share all of their information except they want to remain anonymous. So they want us to coordinate their services. They want agencies to be able to talk to one another, but they don't want agencies to know their name. This is right now incredibly uncommon. Um, in fact, less than 2% of all clients we've ever served in Austin Travis County have asked to remain anonymous. But it is a client's right and it is a client's um, ability uh, to remain anonymous. So we want to make sure they know that they have that. If a client does choose to remain anonymous, this is how the form would be filled out. They can make all of the exact same decisions about for the information they do give us, how we want them to, uh, how they want that shared, either all of it, none of it, or um, only the answers they specifically choose. Um, the only difference in how we fill out the form is instead of client name, because this gets uploaded, we will put in the word anonymous and then their client ID. We will initial at the bottom of every single page on this ROI showing that the client chose to remain anonymous within HMIS, and then the actual staff member will sign and date to document that they did receive this information directly from the client. So very importantly, let's uh, uh, just touch on that one more time, though. A client remaining anonymous is very, very rare. Uh, but no client can be denied services for not answering a question or signing this form, and that includes their name, social security number, date of birth. They can't be denied services for any of those pieces of information unless you need that specific piece of information to determine if they're eligible for your service. So clients don't have to answer, but we definitely want folks to know that they're, we're sharing their services for a reason. The more information we have, the more open the system is, the easier it is for staff members to talk to staff members at other agencies, the easier it is and the more effective services we can provide and the easier it is to coordinate their services. So we're sharing for a very, very specific reason and that's to help provide them better services. Um, if clients want to restrict information or refuse to answer some questions, they need to know that as, an, as a community, we are still going to do our absolute best to provide them the best services we possibly can, but that it just is going to, it is going to make it slightly harder. So again, we we'll do the best we can with what we have. It's their decision to determine, or it's their right to determine what they give us. So they determine what we have. Um, also, just one brief reminder right here. Also remember that just because the, uh, something is available or visible within ServicePoint, that doesn't mean that we have the uh, um, professional right or responsibility to look at it. Um, we should only be looking at information that is absolutely essential to providing a client services. So as social services providers, both within our agencies and as a community, um, we have a duty to only view and use information that is absolutely necessary to uh, perform our jobs, which is to help the clients. So clients choose what information goes into the system, and then we as staff members 
have an initial responsibility to choose what agency or what information we're, uh, we need to access as part of our jobs. So two additional possibilities, though. The client wishes to remain anonymous and does not want to share any uh, other information. Again, it looks almost exactly like a combination of that anonymous uh, ROI plus uh, the information should not be shared ROI. So they tell us they don't want to share, that they understand the system, or that they understand the system, but they don't want to share, and um, case manager documents that client stated that. So naturally, because we're uploading this, we don't want to get the client's real name, real signature, or real initials on this form. So instead, when it comes to client's representative signature, we're asking the clients just take pen to paper and write out, I wish to remain anonymous. So we don't get their name, but we do get their intent, and we can document their intent through our form. And the very last possibility, and again, this is incredibly rare. As far as I'm aware, it's only happened three times in the history of the collaborative. But there may be some clients who absolutely refuse to sign uh, the form or put an X on a form or put any, pen to paper for any reason. If you do get that situation, most importantly, talk to your agency admin first um, and, um, to see your internal processes and whatnot. But our most important responsibility as a collaborative is to document the client's wishes in those cases. So even if a client is unwilling to physically write down their wishes, as staff members, we have the right and we have the legal ability to record those on behalf of the client. Um, so just in those cases, we fill out the form as best we possibly can. Uh, again, client name is anonymous. Number should be whatever client or number the client gets within the system. We sign because we're documenting this. And then um, under uh, at the very bottom, under other, put client refused to sign. And this should also have client which is green anonymous with an HMIS initialed as well. So we'd have two sections there. Okay, and now I think it's going to make me fly through, indeed, I expertly put together PowerPoint. Okay, so things to be mindful of. Don't forget, there is an option on the form to indicate when the client would like to remain anonymous. So if you do get a case where a client wants to remain anonymous, again, very, very rare, should continue to be rare, we want to document it on the, every page of that form. We are now uploading our, all ROIs into service point. So if an ROI is filled out, it should go into the system. Like all other service point data entry, you have up to five business days from the date it's gathered to upload it into the system. But just like with every other piece of service point data entry, the sooner, the better. If a client goes from your agency to another agency within a few days, they may, uh, if they get there before you upload that ROI, they may, not, they, may, um, they may have to fill out another one. So we definitely don't want that to happen if we can avoid it. If an existing client has an old ROI entry, there is no need to alter or delete it at all at this time. So we know that the client gave consent with the old ROI. We have a record of that. And now we'll have a record that they completed consent with the new ROI. Both of those pieces of data are valuable. Both of those, both of those decisions are valuable. We want to keep those records. Do not complete and enter the new ROI until November 1st. So any ROI entry that's put in the system before November 1st, it's automatically going to assume it's with the old ROI, and it's going to ask you to make a new one. Same thing for other agencies. Um, they will not see a, uh, if they see an ROI entered before that, the assumption is going to have to be it was with the old ROI. So I know you're all excited, but just hold off for a sec. And then um, last piece here. So green padlocks will automatically share new information for existing clients, and it'll share all information for new clients but it will not automatically share historical information. So if a client does wish to share all their information with every HMIS agency, and they have historical information from your agency in the system, in order to share that, we have to manually go into the lock and give it specific permission to do so. So we'll go into those exact steps in a sec. Okay. Yes, indeed, PowerPoint, that was a lot of information. But here's what's actually going to happen on uh, November 1st. So we're going to start getting new ROIs for all of our current active clients. So every new client that comes in from November 1st onward, we want to make absolutely sure they're filling out the new ROI, not the old one. Um, again, all of those new ROIs are going to be uploaded into the system and attached to the client's profile. We will show you the exact steps for how to do that in a sec. And then moving forward, for all of your existing clients or for clients that are already existing in the system but are, were uh, created before uh, November 1st but have not yet come to your agency yet, if they don't have the new ROI, then as soon as we're creating an update or an annual assessment or meeting with them or adding any new information, 
we want to get that new ROI before we add any new information into service point. So, and then the final bullet we talked about a little bit earlier, but we don't have on here is for clients who you're still meeting with and just are not are not putting information to service point yet. Again, if at all possible, get that new ROI with that client before you have to update any information. Um, yeah, it's going to make their life easier and your life easier. Okay. So with all those policy changes with the new ROI, now we can actually talk about what these changes mean for data entry and service point, especially for visibility and the ROI uh, entry procedure. So we've broken down what these changes will look like uh, to you when you're doing one of these three things, either creating a new client, enrolling an existing client to your program, or updating enrolled clients' records, such as through an annual assessment or exiting a client. So we'll talk about what those look like now, and then we'll go out of this PowerPoint and actually go to the training site, and I'll show you the actual steps we'll be taking within service point to do these three things. So checking for an existing ROI and uploading attachments. So a client should not have to sign a new ROI at every agency. Very importantly, once a client has signed the new ROI for the entire HMIS collaborative, they only have to do that once. Um, you need to make sure, however, that that uh, file attachment on the, uh, that that ROI is attached to the client profile so that other agencies know that client has already been given the opportunity to make their uh, sharing decision with the new ROI. And, um, yeah, yeah, and just uh, quickly on the top. So here are the steps you need to take to see if an ROI has already been uploaded. Step one, check the ROI tab. So you can either check this from the actual ROI tab in Service Point, or you can go to the client summary. If you see an ROI entry for your agency with a date on or after November 1st, you know someone from your agency has already filled out the new ROI with the client and has either uploaded it or will be uploading it within the next five days. If it's in there, you can stop. If it's not, go to step two. Check to see if they have an ROI in their file attachments. So if you go and check for an ROI entry and you see it's blank, it's entirely possible that someone at another agency has already gathered an ROI. So check that, go to the client profile, and if it has been attached and uploaded, you will see that ROI attached to the client profile there. Um, again, I'll show you how to do that, but you scroll down, click on it, see, you can see the client has filled it out correctly, and you can see what decisions they made when they filled out that ROI. Um, so yeah, if you do download that, you can confirm the client's made the decision, ROI filled out correctly, then you can go back to the ROI tab, or you can go to the client summary tab, and you can add a release of information entry for your project. So what that ROI entry will tell the system is that the client, um, is that even though the client did not complete an ROI with you, you did specifically confirm that someone else completed the ROI with them and that it is visible to you in the system, that you checked it, and that it is complete. So you've done your due diligence in confirming the client gave you permission to gather their information. If, however, you do go to that section and the client has not completed that ROI yet, then um, you will, or, uh, or if you go in there and the ROI is old, then we'll complete a current ROI with your client, go to the ROI tab or the summary tab, add a release of, informa and, uh, add a release of information entry for your specific project. Once you've created that entry, um, then you can actually attach that new ROI once you've scanned it to the client's profile. And again, just another reminder, you have five business days from the signing of the ROI to upload it, um, but the sooner the better. So to do that, scan the signed ROI and save to your computer or onto the shared agency drive if that's how your scanning works. Go to the client profile, scroll all the way down to the bottom until you see file attachments, or go to the ROI tab and click on the paperclip icon next to the ROI entry you just made. Uh, once you're at add file attachments, just click on add new file attachment and choose whichever file you just scanned, uh, choose the file that you scanned. Um, yeah, it's just that easy. Okay. So visibility changes. So again, if you've ever had to deal with visibility, padlocks, locking, unlocking, things are about to get a whole lot easier. Um, if you're not, if you've never had to deal with that, congratulations, you skipped a scary and horrible chapter of our history. So if you're creating a client after November 1st, you will not need to touch the padlocks anymore. Their sharing is now open automatically for every question that they choose to answer. That includes historical, present, or future data. If you're working with a client who was created before November 1st, you will still need to verify that their padlocks are open to make sure that their information is going in correctly. And if they're not, you will still have to go in and manually open them. So the system on November 1st will not automatically open anything that's already closed. So we know that anyone entering the system after November 1st has automatically given permission to share uh, the information that goes into HMIS. 
but the system uh, is very cautious and will not assume we have permission until we specifically tell it we do. So that's a good thing. Uh, again, in the past, you were mainly openly uh, the following padlocks for clients who agreed to share. Individual services, program-specific data elements, entry-exit tabs, case manager tabs, household relationships tabs, and, and so many tabs. Um, but again, from now on, as long as or from now on, you will no longer have to manually open those logs for new clients. Okay, and these next two are going to be a whole lot easier when I actually show you on the training site. But when adding your new entry for a project, you will see the HUD UDE assessment and the additional questions assessments. Um, if a client does have historical data that they do wish to share, you will need to click on the padlock on those assessments, regardless of what color it is, to give it permission to share historical data. That uh, padlock's color, uh, it, it may look green and open, but uh, assessment sharing is based upon, uh, that basically refers to new or future data. So it won't necessarily mean it's going to share historical data. Again, unless you go into it specifically and give it specific permission to share future and historical answers. And then again, if you're updating a current client who already exists in the system, is already enrolled in your program, you're going into either the assessments tab or the entry exit tab to update some information. Exact same process. Ta uh, padlock may look open, may look green, but unless you've gone in and told it at some point that it has permission to share historical information, it will not make that choice for you. Okay, time for service point. Sure. Okay. Okay, and just in case anyone's worried about all the steps we just talked about, in addition to releasing this recorded webinar uh, recording, um, we will also be submitting step-by-step -step instructions with screenshots on how to, how to upload, how to open, how to check for an ROI, all those steps. So, so let's do the hardest one first. Let's say this is a client who already exists in the system who is now entering my program. So. Uh, I know Ms. Jones has signed an old ROI, but I don't know yet if she has signed a new ROI. So you can either go to the Summary tab or the ROI tab. Person, I prefer the ROI tab. And I can see that she does have an entry for my program, but it is, from, it is old. It is from October 20th. So in this situation, I would go back to Client Profile and scroll all... Let me close this over here since it's distracting the person behind me. Okay, you'd go back to client profile, scroll down to the very bottom, and there's a section here called file attachments that very few providers are using right now. But thankfully, we all will be now. So if she had a, 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 a ROI uploaded to the system, this is where it would be visible. It would say the date added, its name, its description, and who actually uploaded it. It's looking blank to me, though, so I know that no one has already filled out a new ROI with it. Let's fix that. Ms. Jones and I would complete the new ROI. I would scan it to my computer, add it. Again, don't do this until November 1st. It's not going to let me do this date, but let's try. So if it were going to let me save, it would look like this. Start date as usual, whatever date she's filling it out. End date, seven years in the future. So now I've uploaded the client's release of information. This is the actual ROI entry. And now I have the option of actually uploading her, uh, of uploading her ROI. So unfortunately, this little thing is in the way. Can you see my? No, you can't. OK, so you can't see me to the very right hand of my screen. So we're going to. Shrink it down a bit so you can actually see. There we go. This is a little paperclip icon I was talking about. So if you want to upload a uh, if you want to upload a file, just click on there. Go to Add New File Attachment, and wherever your agency saves documents, I've created a folder called Scan Docs. Click on it, open, upload. Now when I go to Client Profile. 
File attachment is now visible, and this file attachment will now be visible to any HMIS agency. Um, so now that I've completed the ROI with Ms. Jones, she doesn't have to complete that document a second time with anyone else. One, we're good. She's made her decisions. Um, no duplicated wasted work. And then again, if, uh, for example, Ms. Jones, we're now enrolling in a new program. Let's say today, I've entered her ROI. And it comes time to open visibility on an assessment. This is the padlock you'll need to open. So again, for historical clients, it may be red, it may be green. But if a client has asked you, uh, asked you to share their historical information, either way, you'll have to go in manually and open it. Oh, and you can't see it again. How about now? Ah. There we go. So to open visibility, if you've already done this before, you probably can do this in your dreams, but if you haven't, it's a pretty straightforward process. Click on the lock. Click on future and historical answers. If the client has chosen to share future and historical answers, add visibility group. And global is a choice that tells it you want to share with the entire system. So now any HMIS agency, any HMIS user that has access to HMIS and this client's uh, profile will now be able to see her current answers and her historical answers. No, we won't say this. If I were creating a new client, I would do the exact same process. Let's see if Mr. Petty's in the system yet. No, he's not. Full name. Please don't steal my identity. Not a military veteran. Search. Add a new client. Yes. We would do the exact same ROI steps of adding a new release of information and uploading the client's uh, ROI. And then when it comes time to do an entry exit, add in entries, add in services, add in case manager, add in household composition, I would not need to open up any padlocks. Since he's coming in with a new ROI and automatic sharing from November 1st onward, um, there's going to be no historical information to open up, so it's a waste of time to try and open up historical information when it doesn't exist. So that is our improvement over the current new client creation system. Okay, and again, I know that was incredibly quick, and uh, this has been the end of a very long webinar. So we are going to have those individual steps in addition to this, uh, in addition to this webinar video posted on the uh, Echo uh, Echo site under the HMIS training section. Too big. Ah. Better? There we go. Okay. So that was a whole lot of questions I know. And uh, we've had a pretty good number of uh, questions that have already come in through the webinar uh, question panel. Um, so we're going to gather all those together and see which questions are repeated, see which questions are new, and put together an actual uh, FAQ comprehensive document. But uh, on the off chance that you did not get a chance to ask your question during the webinar today, or if you're watching this webinar later on after the recording has been posted and you do have some questions that haven't been answered by this presentation itself, um, definitely feel free to send an email to either Tina Griego or, uh, or to me, uh, Preston Petty. So there's our Austin Echo websites posted right there. Uh, very importantly, we know this is going to be posted very, very soon. Uh, we know we're going to start to switch over or we're going to switch over this new ROI literally next week. So this is happening very quickly. What we can commit to is that any question we receive by the end of the day on Friday of this week, we will definitely answer as part of our FAQ before, um, before we switch over to the new ROI on November 1st. So if you do have a question that you'd really, really like answered very, very soon, just make sure you ask it soon, and we'll get that answered. Uh, any questions that we don't get answered, that we don't get asked until later, obviously we will still answer, we'll still cover in training,
but uh, we can't guarantee we'll get you an answer by the end of next week. So ask early and ask thoroughly, but don't ask often. We'll get them posted quick. Um, okay. So I'm going to cut off the recording now, um, but leave this open for a few more minutes so folks can continue to ask questions through the actual uh, webinar chat session. Um, but any question you did not get the chance to answer or uh, any question that you pops into your head a few minutes later, again, feel free to answer as part of the, uh, uh, or feel free to ask as a, sorry, people are sending me hassling uh, text messages now. Um, feel free to ask later as part of an actual email. So this has been our presentation as part of the new ROI. I hope it was exciting. I definitely had a blast. And um, yeah, we are officially done. So.